when I got a text message the morning after that dinner had happened, and the text was, do you want to buy a football club? Hello and welcome back to the Football in Question. For the first time ever, we are joined by our first ever in-person guest. Our first guest of the season as well. He's a co-owner of a football club at just 28 years old, an NFT web free specialist. He has a combined following over, of over 100,000 followers. It's none other than Crawley Town co-owner Hunter Arell. How are you doing, Hunter? Mate? I'm amazing. Thank you for Thank having you. me here today. We are very excited to have you on, our first ever guest. Bit of sad news, Jordan couldn't make it. It'd obviously have loved to be here, but it's just me and Isaac here today yeah. with Hunter. We uh, want to start a little bit of a tradition as well with having guests on the show. We're going to open it with uh, one special question. Yeah. Okay. What's your go-to food at a football ground if you were going to a game? Say Crawley, you know, they play Mansfield on the weekend. Right. What, what, what are you having for lunch when you're there? Uh, chicken pie. Chicken pie? Yeah. Wow. Very nice. Yeah. Very 100%. Nice. Oh, I'll be honest, there's only one person on the show who, here who would agree with you, and that is Jordan, who's not here. He's, he's a pie man when he goes to football. I'm a hot dog man. Personally. I'm hot dog man. I, Interesting. I, I, I alternate. I had a, had a burger on Thursday, but I'm, I'm more of a hot dog man, yeah. Of course. Of course. Yes. Right, so, and, uh, obviously, you're, I've said you're a co-owner of Crawley Town Football Club, but can you just kind of tell the audience who you are, what you do, and kind of how you, what, you, what your involvement is with Crawley Town? 100%. So I am uh, one of the co-owners uh, of Crawley Town. I am a co-owner uh, of Wagner United, uh, which is the ownership group of Crawley Town. Um, I do a lot of other stuff. I've kind of ventured into the world of Web3, which is like cryptocurrency, NFTs, digital collectibles, um, and started some companies within that space and currently run a venture capital company uh, that invests in different startups and different uh, types of projects in the space and now I've ventured into the world of football which is kind of like I call it my reunion uh, back into the sport because I, I played my whole life and then kind of stopped playing competitively uh, when I went into university and now that this has come back it's pretty much all I think about. You played your whole life where did you who did you play for? Uh, I played for like travel clubs and high school and you know er, er, anything that was competitive at the, the mm. time I never played for um, you know, like a college or anything. Right. I did uh, end up actually, though, at one point playing with the Chelsea development uh, team when I was younger uh, for some time and also on the Olympic development team. Oh, Ooh. wow. Yes. Brilliant. What position were you in? Uh, striker. Striker. Nice. nice. Very nice. Right. So you've obviously, you know, you brought Crawley Town, what was it, six, six and a half months ago now? Yes. Think, something like that. How's it been? Um, Amazing. I, and I, I hesitate there because the answer sometimes I think is it's nothing I could have ever expected. It's just been, you know, you wake up and it's what's today's surprise and in a very good way of, okay, it's going to be exciting. There's a lot happening and, uh, you know, it's it's been a process of reacting to our plan, having bumps in the road and how can we improve it. But it's been amazing. The people that I've met through this process have made every single day worth it. What's Crawley been like? Because you've, you've said another podcast that you love the town, you love the city. I'll be honest, in England, out of all the glamorous cities that we have, Crawley, it might not be up there in the top 10, I'll be, I'll be honest. But obviously you've got an affiliation with it, you've got an attachment. Why is it such a, a great place? So I think a lot of people when they're asked, like, what's your favorite city, they immediately go to, like, what, like, what city like, has the most fun things to do and the best food and... In my opinion, the best city is where the best people are, and you can have the best experience of people. And in Crawley, I've really found that the people are just genuinely good people. Mm -hmm. um, they also really care about the football club. It runs through their veins uh, just absolutely to the core. So, yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed being there. They've been open-armed. They're, they're absolutely the nicest and... Uh, couldn't ask for better fans. Yeah, I, I remember the first time seeing you there. I was at a Crawley Town press conference. I was interviewing the players, but meanwhile, I had you walking around just kind of filming stuff. At the time, I was kind of like, who is this guy? I'd obviously <laughs> heard some Americans have brought the football club, but I didn't, I didn't really understand it. Um, my editor told me who you were uh, and all that. How did it actually come about buying an English football club? Because I've heard, you know, this, the kind of scene was you're at a, you're at a dinner dinner party, you're out for dinner, basically, and um, the, the conversation just kind of, kind of came up. How, how did you get to buying Crawley? Um, well, for me, it came in when I got a text message the morning after that dinner had happened, and the text was, do you want to buy a football club? 
Um, and I, I literally just responded yes. And then I think within like 30 minutes, it was like, all right, I know how much I got. The money's on the way kind of thing. Um, so really once it was, all right, everybody's in who wants to do it, started a searching process looking at uh, what clubs were for sale or figuring out what clubs we could all, you know, offer on, what made sense, what was our strategy. Um, and it wasn't like, hey, we're just going to go straight to the EFL. It's like, all right, let's understand the global scene of football currently. What, you know, where do we want to be? What leagues are the best leagues to be in? Um, and then, you know, at the end of that search, it kind of turns into, okay, now that we've found a team, uh, does what has to happen? What's the roadmap along acquiring this club, improving it, um, and then expanding it into what we want it to be. I heard rumours that you actually tried to buy Bradford C yeah. before Crawley Town were in there. Any other clubs around Europe, say, around England, that you were going in for, or was it just...? Um, I, think, I think we were specifically looking for clubs that met that criteria of we think they align with what we're trying to achieve, which was you know the, the Internet's team. Crawley Town, I think, has offered something super unique, which is they have a, a, an incredibly old traditional history. I mean, they're an 1800s team, right? At the same time, they're in a point where the page is is blank enough where we can come in, restructure things in a in a very different direction, and we're not really like tearing down tradition. We're just imp- like gonna find a way to project that to the world in a in a larger way. Um, and give them the infrastructure they need to be the bigger team that we want them to be. Um, you know, you look at some teams and they already have giant stadiums. They have these giant followings, and the whole town loves them. We look at Crawley Town. It's like, all right, the town is is around the team, but we can find surrounding areas to expand that team to. We can improve the stadium, improve training grounds. Um, I think one of the biggest things for me was looking at how they finished the previous season and saying, wow, like. You know, if we just improved training, kept you know kept the same players, kept kept everything the same, you just improved the training regimens. They they can perform better. Um, obviously, we've taken that to an even higher level of bringing in uh, better players, better better uh, regimen, better like just better everything um, to prove them. Absolutely. Before we continue with this episode, make sure to like and subscribe. We've got a lot of content on our YouTube channel and you can be a part of it if you help subscribe and let us grow as a channel. So obviously Hunter, I think it was yeah just over two weeks ago now, Crawley Town actually parted ways with Kevin Betsy, their manager that you appointed at the start of this season after John Yens' sacking as well, um, around about three months ago, was it four months ago? Kevin Butsley obviously didn't have the best start in the league. It was one win from 12 opening games. Judge on the fact that, you know, you've just, uh, you've had a quite a hard start, start to the season. Has owning a football club actually lived up to its expectations? Um, I don't think I came in with expectations. I, I think in my, sure, in my mind there was a, this is the best case scenario, here's the worst case scenario of what can happen. Um, but I kind of came in with an open mind of, all right, whatever whatever does actually end up happening, you just have to react to and uh, just keep performing at the best level you can as an owner and as a, I think, a business businessman. Um, but I've enjoyed it. No, yeah. I, I wouldn't say like, I, I definitely will say like, it's been stressful. There's been days where I've been at the absolute high of all highs where, you know, Fulham was, I, I can't describe that day and that evening. Um, on the other hand, like being in the crowd at Doncaster, going down the way we did on that losing streak, people traveled hours to get there and just being like, oh my God, this is absolutely horrible. I feel, I I felt terrible. I, I I felt personally responsible for the score that was on the board. Um, and, and I know like that isn't true, but at the same time, I feel like I have an obligation to every single fan to make sure that they're as proud to be a fan of Crawley as they can and that the team represents what they want it to be. As a no-no, because obviously as fans, when a manager's not doing too well, it's pretty easy for a fan to eventually call that, call that point and go, right, get him out, get the manager out, I want someone else in. <laughs> we've had it, we've got to support I mean, I mean yeah, it. I mean, it's refreshing to see like an owner like you, like actually, you know, you're going into the stands, you're talking to fans and then, I mean, I, I, for years I've complained about our owners and suddenly, you know, it, all we want is a little bit of communica- communication and to feel like they're 
human and they're not away in the stars right. in the boardroom. But yeah, to have like you communicating with Cord fans is kind of a refreshing view. That's the thing, because uh, you know, I'm sure you've been told this before, but that is a, you being sad is a massive thing. Although it might bring controversy in the media and yeah. things like that, you know, because it's not it's not so common. An owner is so interacted no. with his fans, but fans would actually love that if Josh Conkey was actually telling us what was going on. If Josh Conkey went and sat with all the Arsenal fans, <laughs> to be fair, you and me have different opinions on Josh Conkey. It's Stan who I have disagreed, but right, okay. we don't need to go into that. I yeah. do have empathy though to some of the Premier League owners oh. that don't go into the stands or don't talk because oh, yeah. I, I think so there is a level of risk with talking about stuff or sharing intimate mm-hmm. information that's happening behind the scenes. I do think that there is certain risk being in the stands. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think I'm very lucky that Crawley Town fans aren't, I, I don't fear for my safety in any way. I understand they might get ye- mad and they can yell at me and, and whatnot, but I don't, you know, physical safety isn't an issue. Mm-hmm. I, I do think, though, that there are scenarios where you do have fans at the premier level or other levels that just are so upset in some cases where there could be. Um, they're, big, I, they're bigger clubs. Yeah, it's, it's a yeah. bigger club. And I also think I feel personally like I've made such a intimate relationship with the town, with the fans. That do you have a section where you are you always going to every game? Like home game? I'm in. The, I'm behind the goal, like right, with okay. the with the rowdy section. Is it the same kind of people that you see every week? Um, I, you know, everybody. You know, the, we have recurring fans. I try to see as many people as possible. So, um, you know, I'll sit in different areas. I'll go stand and introduce myself to people if they're you know they want to say hi. Again, just try to be accessible. Don't don't sit uh you know the same exact spot every time don't sit the same person it's about i think being about the mix i think as being an owner and and any owner of any football team should be the biggest fan of that team yeah um i kind of just show it as if i was you know a nobody like just there as a fan just trying to do what a normal fan would do and and before you came in or when you came in that was obviously you know you want to make crawley the internet's team Realistically, as much as, as as ambitious as it seems now, you want to take Crawley to the Premier League. When when you do get that far, and if you do get that far, and you start rising up the leagues, you know maybe the stadium gets bigger, maybe you get more fans in. Are you still going to be amongst the fans, even if it gets to that stage, or are you kind of going to peel back, yeah. maybe make it a bit more of a safer environment? What's, what's... I don't see what I'm doing now changing in any way. Right. If if there. If I have to do certain things to keep it the way it is right now, I will. Okay. Um, and and I've, I've had that thought process of, like, what does that look like? I'm kind of more focused on, like, what's now and what is, like, the next step than, like, what's the ultimate future uh, going to be and how do I prepare for that? But I, I don't want to change what I'm doing now. I like it too much. It makes me too happy. Um, and I'd like to maximize that happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I think, I mean, it's a perfect transition to move on to Fulham. Isn't it? Obviously, yeah. <laughs> obviously, you mentioned that Fulham is a massive, massive moment in Crawley seasons uh, so far. Um, Carabao Cup match for for anyone that doesn't know, mm. um, you just beaten Bristol Rovers in the first round. I think it was one 0 wasn't it? Yes. I, I was I was at that game. Of course, I should, <laughs> you should, the know. You should know. I should know. Um, you come up against Fulham in the next match. They start with some big players: Kevin and Babu, Joe Bryan, Tom Ke- uh, Keani, um, Keani. It's a Kenny. Kearney. Kenny. Scottish. It's a D up on the pitch as well. Like, mm. There's some there's some huge players to come up against a League Two side. You go into it, you're obviously the underdogs. You, you come out as two, two no winners. I don't know how else to, to describe it. It was an absolutely unbelievable night. How can you describe that? What was it like? What was going through your head? Uh, I want to s- say the week leading up to that felt like it was like Christmas, a final exam, and like uh, you had a surgery <laughs> all on the same day. It, it, it really just felt like, you know, this was like the ultimate test and like it happened way sooner I think than we thought we would ever play a premier team right mm-hmm. like it, it I, I don't know how to describe it still um, I had so much anxiety the morning I woke up that I I was just like shaking the whole day um, there are film crews everywhere we you know I was getting asked questions that I didn't have an answer for or didn't even know how to like even give a like response to the fans were like, I mean, it was just the energy in that stadium pre-game, like before, right. before even half the people were in there was more than I've ever seen at any other game. Um, yeah, it was unreal. An unreal night. So obviously, you win 2-0, massive, massive win. You're through against Burnley in the next round, Burnley away as well. 
the, the biggest thing to come away from that match, though, apart from James Balagese having an absolutely... He killed it. Yeah, unbelievable mm. performance. The kind of biggest thing to come out of that match was when you gormlessly ran onto the pitch. You're quoting uh, someone there, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I'm, quite, I'm <laughs> quoting Simon Jordan. It, it, you know, it all kicked off after that. There was a pitch invasion with the Crawley fans. You know, it was quite a surreal night, and you, and you joined the fans, right? Can you describe that scenario for us? Um, when you decided to run on. So the the first thing I'll say to that is one, I don't endorse pitch invasions. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a smart thing. Smart and thing. I, I understand why now, after the fact. I think it's a great learning experience. I think it also kind of highlighted some areas that I need to be like educated in yeah, a little yeah. bit. So you know. That being said, I, I, it was one of those moments where I, I think emotions and everything kind of got over me and I wasn't truly aware of what the implications of running on there were. Mm -hmm. um, it was still a special moment for me. It's something that I'll you know, remember. Um, well, that, well, that's the thing because on one hand you can have these surreal moments where if the authorities make to look after things, Aguero scores, Man City fans were Yeah, no, the yeah, they don't, the FA don't really, exactly. there was not an FA story after that. Oh no, there wasn't, because it was such a big moment. It was such a, like, at the and end of the season, that happens at every, almost every club where something happens at the end of the day, you, you expect it. And when it and looks, stewards don't, sorry, know. when it looks so good on camera, that's fine. Yeah, it's good for the business, right. it's good for On, on the other side of things, things can go horrifically wrong sometimes, right. oh, yeah. of course, right? This, this scenario, that didn't happen. This is a different environment, things were taken care of perfectly well. Uh, in the time that you were running on the pitch, obviously you see all the fans, obviously you're going mental, you're thinking, God, this is the best day of my life, we've just beaten Fulham. <laughs> Did you know it was the wrong thing to do at the time? Did you have any idea? Um, you know, I, I waited like a couple minutes before even thinking about going on the field. I think when I looked out and I saw like everybody out there, I right. think there was like film crews and stuff. I was just like, ah, like go, like run, like go join them. Um, not even knowing, still at that time, it was just like, I don't want to get involved in like the mess because I felt like, uh, that actually might cause issues. Um, yeah, and then, like, I think the second I got out there, I was out there for, like, 30 seconds, I immediately was like, okay, this is too crazy. Right. <laughs> I, I've kind of probably, one, put myself in a bad situation, so I started to, like, get to the sideline. I think most of that time I was out there was, like, right on the edge, um, mainly because I did feel wrong in, in some way to have everybody crying around. Um, again, safety of the fans is paramount, uh, of course, and the players especially. And, oh, yeah. and the st I think also what concerned me was like seeing staff members. Um, you know, it, they're overwhelmed. It, it is a risk. Uh, I'm not worried about the field conditions or anything. I, the only thing I think running through my head was like, okay, like you're you might have just dove in in the deep end. All right, time to like reel it back in. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I certainly, it's funny, the Simon Jordan, uh, <laughs> some of the quotes that, I remember reading that and feeling like ashamed actually, the, right, the okay. way he, he had portrayed it. And I, I understand. You're ashamed of him? You're ashamed of how he, 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 said, he said it? No. You know, I think of myself, right? Like, right, okay. I think for from his perspective, I get it. Uh, it, it was wrong to be on there, but. I would have loved for him to have reached out and asked for my opinion before just saying I'm gormless. Uh, I, I think I got called like a middle earther of some sort. <laughs> like there was some, there was just some outrageous stuff said from him. Uh, and I don't know. I, I also feel like I represent like America, like in some way, right? Like I'm an American. Uh, I'm doing that. It's like, oh, great. You know, another idiot American yeah, yeah. over here. That's not great. Um, I, honestly, the one thing that came out of it is I, I tried to reach out to them. They didn't respond or I didn't get anything back. I, I was like, look, like I'm happy to chat with you. Come to a game. Like experiences. Understand why in that moment that happened. Understand why I care so much about this team and why I'm so deeply invested in it emotionally. Um, yeah, like and Simon, if you ever see this, come to a game. Like We're open to you coming. We want you to come. We want you to experience and understand why... Uh, Crawley Town is so special. Tom Jordan, obviously from Talksport. Yeah, you, uh, if you want to. <laughs> I mean, with Talksport, you know, they, I mean, not just Talksport, but I mean, the British media, they always, you know, they'll come up with inflammatory statements to get reactions, to get clicks and all stuff. But like, I mean, I've had my fair share of bits of moments where I've gone, that's not quite right, you know, yeah. with things they, with any piece of media says. Do, yeah. do, do you not think like, because uh, as much as right, okay, looking back on it, what you did was, you know, it was wrong. Okay, maybe maybe you shouldn't have. In the moment, though. Yeah. In the moment, though, I'll be honest, any footballing fan would be lying if they told you 
if their team just got promoted or won the league and everyone was safe, they're on that pitch. They're on that pitch. Oh, thing, oh, absolutely. I mean, the thing is, I wouldn't be the first person to run on that pitch, but if another, t- if, if, oh, yeah. if 200 people had run on, I'd yeah, go, yeah. well, I know, I'm, I'll, I'll go on, yeah. yeah. Well, like, I know. We're not endorsing it. No, it? we're not endorsing yeah. it. Yeah. In, it. I like, have to like put like a giant sign, yeah. like, do not pitch in vain. We'll try and edit. I do not, like, please <laughs> don't. Don't pitch don't. unless Hunter's there. No, <laughs> no, we'll, no, we'll, no. Edit, we'll edit that on. We'll edit that, like, the little big sign on. But like, yeah, like, I think in the moment when you get that emotion, you want to like live in that moment and take it all in, run on the pitch, run near the players. As a fan, that's amazing because you're running on, on the pitch, your team player, on you're running with so the players. The other side of this that I don't think people understand is that in America, so like when I, me growing up in college, if your team won in like the last play of the game or it was a big game, everybody ran on. So like uh, Duke versus Virginia Tech, um, oh, yeah. tw- it was like 2019 or 2020, I can't remember what year it was, but. I remember sitting there and we hit a three with like ten, with three seconds left. We hit a three. We're all going crazy. We're up by two. And then they came down. Uh, who was it? Gray? Um, he shot, missed the shot, and we all just erupted. And within like half a second, you know, everybody's out there jumping around. Mm-hmm. Enter Sandman's playing. Truly a special moment. Right. That's. In, a, in America, that is like glorified. It's almost like we saw this last weekend with uh, Alabama versus Tennessee. Okay. You know, unfortunately, I had a bet on that game that didn't go through <laughs> because of that. But um, you know, I understand them. Everybody's on the field; they're ripping pole go- pole uh, the goalposts down. It's a different environment. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's fair to say. I think in Britain, compared to maybe other countries, especially America, we've definitely got a bit of a different culture when it comes to fan culture. There's a bit more. Worry when it comes from stewards and yeah, police. Yeah, or yeah. All yeah. things have happened in the past, and horrible things have happened. Yeah, exactly. Past. We've got a bad kind of rep historically. At the same time, though, like yeah, no, thank God, n- nothing happened that night. Yeah. And, and also, I think you were aware of the situation that you know things were under control to to some extent. Um, but also at the same time, you, I think you should have been been able to give your say. On yeah, the, yeah. Because you yeah. didn't. Hunter, would you run on the pitch again? No, oh. I will never. I will never run on the pitch. I can like guarantee that. Like. I, I've even got it's gotten to the point now where after games I'm so like hesitant to even go on the other side of the fence. Like, yeah, yeah. It ends. I'll wait until you know there's the someone like the other staff have walked out onto the side. Mm-hmm. Then I'll feel comfortable. Um, again, the field is for players. Stands are for fans. But what's the rule now? Right? Are you excited for Burnley away? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, again, my my one like asterisk there is. I keep being told I'm gonna freeze. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. To be fair, Cordy's not that bad in terms of how how cold it gets. But yeah, Burnley. Oh, yeah. I mean, the thing is, South Coast you get a bit of wind, but Burnley up north, it's I mean, it's rough. Enjoy, enjoy. Yeah, yeah <laughs> so. I've got two winter jackets, so hopefully I can survive. Oh, that 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 that'll be, that'll be fine. Yeah. I, I hope you win, though. I'll be honest. I really hope you win because yeah. what what a run it would be. You'd be free to like some. Yeah, you you could grab another. You could grab another top six Premier League team yeah. out of that. Something like that. So, yeah. yeah. Massive, massive night. Do you think you'll win? You know, I think the boys are performing currently a way that they haven't all season, and it's getting closer to what I think they should be doing. I think there's a ton we can still work on. Don't get me wrong. It's not like, you know, Lewis is taking over and all of a sudden everything's like, oh, it's perfect. Mm. There's still a ton to work on. Uh, I do think, though, going into that game, there's, there's no scenario where you don't win that. Uh, well, that's the thing. Lewis. Well, there obviously is a scenario we don't win, but I don't think there's any reason Why we can't. can't. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing, Lewis Young, he's, got, he's come in, he's, he's had three games in charge as interim manager. The second time he's been interim manager of Crawley Town this year, he's won all three of your games. Yep. The club is on pretty much an absolute low by the time Kevin Betsy had gone. Um, what was it? Yeah, it was one win from 12 league games. It, it wasn't going well at all. Obviously, he had that Fulham night, but that was kind of the peak of it, and the rest of it was quite disappointing yep. on the pitch. Lewis has come in, Three wins on the bounce. The club's, the club's bouncing, you know. It, it, it was a great place to be on Saturday. I was at the Mansfield game. It, it was terrific. What do you think it is about Lewis that's managed to deliver this kind of short-term impact to the club at the moment? So having been around him the whole, I think, beginning of the season, it's very clear that his connection to the players is, is very intimate and that he understands them, they understand him, he has that really, really mm-hmm. strong relationship. Um, 
I also think he was able to come in and, you know, whenever you have that manager change, you have that, like, fresh kind of, like, bump in, you know, like, oh, all right, like, here we go. Like, it's it's a new beginning. I think he's been able to go into the locker room and, and motivate people who might have been feeling down, like, oh, like, you know, I'm not, my passes aren't getting through. I'm not scoring goals. I'm letting people get past, like, that you have to feel like that when you're having a poor season, you're low on the table. He's gone in there and I think established that, look, like, who cares? You, who are you? Come up, show up, you know, you have the chance to, to turn this around and don't, don't be down on yourself. And look, the morale is way up. Mm-hmm. When you go to a training, uh, we went to training last week and it felt like, it felt like somebody had told everybody they'd been given a million dollars. They just were happy working hard 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 and i think i think he also came in and under told them like you know you gotta you gotta work for this if you really want to be playing for crawley you need to understand that it's a privilege and an honor and you need to show up for it i don't know exactly what your role is in the club but obviously it's no i'm that sounds (laughs) bad that does sound bad as in i don't know who really makes the hard-hitting decisions as the as the you know who's going to be the next manager who's going to sack this manager, you know, right. things like that, right? But is there a moment when, because uh, uh, as fans, fans are pretty clear in it, as in they, they can, they have, there's a moment when they go, right, he needs to go now. Mm-hmm. Is there a, was there a moment for you when, unfortunately, as much as the hard work Betsy put into the team, was there a moment for you when you, you kind of realised that, right, okay, it's, it's time to move on now, let's, let's change things up? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to, like, put it down to, like, a moment or, um, you know, publicly talk about too much about like that that part of it i will say though that what what was really hard was when at doncaster again i felt personally responsible and it felt like all right something really needs to change here um the one area that i think also concerned me was like statistically when you looked at stat sheets after a game you looked at a, a scouting report um it just felt like you, you can tell, like, we weren't performing well. And you could write that off again, that a lot of the players are new to playing with each other. But, I mean, the squad we have, the people on the field are so good. There's some real talent in there. Yeah. It, it just, you know, we, need, we needed to make a change, um, unfortunately. I, and Kevin, uh, an absolute amazing person. I love Kevin. I'm, gl- I'm <laughs> very glad I got to meet him and be around him. Um, I'm very disappointed, though, that... You know, it didn't work out for him, and uh, I, I truly wish that there was, a, you know, an outcome of this where, you know, we went undefeated or, you know, we ran all the way and finished, you know, top three or something. Like, there is a reality of that, and unfortunately, there's, you know, it just didn't happen. Yeah, absolutely. Kevin Betsy, I don't know how much. Yeah, I mean, I know about Kevin Betsy. I mean, I'd heard of him last year because he was an academy coach at Arsenal, and I, I, it was his first big job, and I was kind of wishing him luck. And I'll be honest, I did not really I'd pay attention too much attention to Crawley and then I remember like two weeks ago you telling me oh he's just you know he's just been sacked because obviously you kind of get the little reports a little bit early <laughs> doing work for Crawley. Hang on I didn't yeah. tell you before. No he didn't me. tell me. <laughs> he didn't tell me but he told me he knew and um, yeah it's a bit sad but like you know with managers like that he's young he'll get another go won't he so. Yeah. I yeah. really hope so because his, his play style as much as maybe it didn't work out for League 2 it's it could work in the Premier League. I mean, it realistically, he's used to, when you're used to young players, it's different yeah. to, to, you know, more grown men. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a learning experience, you know. Yeah, I mean, I don't think the the result of where we are on the table reflects, like, his knowledge and skill base no. of, of being a coach and a manager and understand how to develop players. So, um, you know, it, it is unfortunate. I think he deserved a, a better outcome. For sure. If you could, um, obviously, you know, you're in the market for a new manager now. Lewis Young looks like the clear favourite at the moment. He's won, you know, he's already a part of the club. He's established with the players. He knows them. He's won three games on the bounce. If you could, maybe you don't want to give too much away, and maybe this does, but if you could, if it was completely down to you, who's the next manager of Cooley Town? Um, that's an interesting question. <laughs> yeah. If it was down to me. I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I think there's... It's when you're looking at the entire scope, it it depends on like who's available. Uh, the one thing Lewis has done so well is again motivate players. You've got that spark back. I'm what we, really just comes out of like seeing how the next game goes and evaluating from there. I, I don't think I've I can you can call or make a decision this no. early. I think taking your time is is so important right now. The last thing I want to do is 
get another month and a half down the road and be like, oh, like we had X option or we should, you know, this doesn't make sense. My, I'm, I'm putting the priority of this. I, I don't think relegation for this squad is a concern. I think they, they're too good and they just t- need, uh, the strategy to be changed a little bit. And um, obviously it's starting to work well now. My goal is to figure out, all right, how do we finish the season as close to or in playoff position as possible? Currently, that means winning two of every three games about uh, to make it there. So of the two league games we played, you know, if we win the next one, great. But every two or three games we play, and it change, the, it's funny because like, I'll model this out and actually look at, all right, what has to happen? Where mm-hmm. are we? What's reality? Um, and it's still possible. And I didn't I think, realize it was doable, to be fair. It is. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're 21st in the league at the moment. Yep. But you still have a lot of games left. What yeah. is it? You've played 13 games. You've still got 33 games left for the season. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, what, 90, 99 points available on offer for you. So, yeah, mm. I suppose it is still doable. Mm. I, I don't think you should rush into it either, to yeah. be fair. Because as much as... I mean, I would say, if it was done to me, I would appoint Lewis Young. Yeah. Because I think he's, you know... He knows the players. I think the one thing this group of players need right now is someone that they know and trust rather than someone else coming in and just coming in and going, right, I'm changing everything. Yeah, exactly. You're going there, you're going there. They need someone they know. Maybe that's why Mikel Arteta worked out, has worked out so well. Uh, I mean, he knows the fabric. That's why Bournemouth's work. They've kind of gone with someone who's the interim yeah. and they've gone, right, just keep keep everything simple. Keep it, like, in terms of relationships, like, instead For of sure. forget intelligence and tactics and all thing, the most important thing is, like, do you trust this guy? Is it a good bond? And will you play for them? And... Yeah, I mean, oh, I don't think there's any question of are the players right now playing for for Lewis because you can see at that first goal, you know, everybody running over to the side. Mm-hmm. I got emotional. We were at uh, a Virginia Tech football tailgate. We had the game on. Everybody was watching, and when that ball went in, I kind of like just stepped away for everybody for a second because I was just like, whoa, like, uh, just. The fact that they all ran over there and they were hugging to see that on TV and be like, "All right, like they're they're back." That's surely more points for Lewis as well. You can see the players are bonding with him and everything. Yeah. Else. And obviously, I don't expect you to go, "Yeah, Lewis Young's the next manager." I mean, yeah, you can't. Yeah, you, can't, can't like you can't give that. Is, like I said, we're taking it game by game. We're looking. There's there's certainly no decision. There's I don't think there's any bias to anything. It's just you know, hey, right now interim, Lewis is managing them. Mm. He's got the three wins and. Um, you know, he'll still be manager for Colchester, obviously. And after that, like, we're just every day evaluating. So there is no, there is no preference to anybody currently. Who's your favorite quarter player? Um, ooh, ooh. putting me on the spot. <laughs> a, play, go, go with play style, because obviously you love all yeah. of them. Play style. But yeah, play style. Who do you, you like to watch on the pitch? Um, you know... And I'll let you pick two, just so it's not... It's not yeah, you don't want to pick favorite. yeah, no. favorites. I think Ashley and Addison has... Oh, I, there's so many like Ashley Nadison and Tom Nichols I think those two are like that dynamic duo yes um, I really enjoy watching them play and they're also two people that when I like see in the training room or, or around the grounds like they're really nice to talk to and they're just fun genuine guys um, I think the other third would be Tom Fellows who I, I, you know, and again, everything I say has some sort of bias to it in, in some way, as much as I try to eliminate. This one is super biased, where I see so much of his play style being close to how I used to play the game. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, I'll, actually, I, I looked at him and thought, you're a young hunter of well. <laughs> <laughs> No way. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, oh. I, I remember, like, watching some of the first games and watching players get the ball and being like, well, I wouldn't do that. What are you doing? Because that, that instinct comes back of get the ball, and immediately I would be like, oh, turn to the right, look up, space, dribble. Oh, your pass is to the left. Yeah. In his case, I would see him, it was like a, I was playing FIFA. He was doing literally everything I would have done in the moment. He plays aggressively. He's hungry. He wants it. Uh, and that just has made him a player when he gets the ball I'm like alright let's see what you got Tom he's, he's a warrior as well he's getting battered about against yeah, Mansfield yeah. and eventually I think yeah he went down with a head injury for about five minutes and he was still going it was, it, it mm. was unbelievable yeah. um, do you remember Tom Fellows he made his professional debut against Arsenal he's on loan from West Brom mm. I don't know if you remember you probably don't That's was, this, was this in the 6 well, this was in yes. the 6-0 last season it was in the 6 nil. I will not remember him oh, no. yeah. <laughs> no. he, to me in that day he was just a he was a figure he was, he was a number on a team sheet I, 
I mean, I'll be honest. You just was, blanked out for that? It was the seventh. Uh, I, I was probably focusing on the fact that I had to go to work the next morning. So, <laughs> no, yeah, no, yeah, but to be fair, he's, he's a terrific player. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's check the Twitter because we might have. I will check that. It's my job. I'm on, okay, I'm on right, Twitter. Yeah, so you can ask these questions. I can check the Twitter. So, obviously, we've put in some questions um, to Twitter. Um, Hunter, uh, fortunately, retweeted it. We've got a lot of traction. We've only got one question. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll, like, oh, see. We can, we can certainly bump this up if Guy hands me my phone. Guy, I've, can we get some, yeah. I'm, like, I'm... I'm loading this up and not much is coming up. Right, We've let, got because it'd be good. So let's let's let's, let's get this final one. The one question we have got on here, we've got it from Preston Johnson, who's uh, oh. his and his question to you is, how does Hunter get his hair to look so good? <laughs> Amazing. It's Pre- fun. Preston Johnson, by the way, is like yeah. another co-owner. Yeah, I know. I, I do know. He's got the NFT uh, NFT <laughs> on there as well. So yeah, I do know. It's funny because. Uh, <laughs> In like the NFT world, I've become like the hair guy for some reason. It's normal hair to me. It, I don't really <laughs> understand why the focus of everything I do is on the hair. Um, I don't know. It, it's it's uh, for the longest time I hated my hair. <laughs> and I, I, weird topic for the podcast. We'll talk about it for a second, I guess. Oh, yeah. Though, but like, um, I had like a bowl cut all the way up until like the end of middle school. And nice. I'm sure people are going to scour the internet to try to find that photo. It's horrific. I don't know what my mom or why my mom let me leave the house uh, looking like that. It it was truly terrible. Um, But yeah, like I hated my haircut all the way up until like the end of 2021. I got a haircut in Long Beach, California. And I walked in and I was like, can you just make me look decent? And so like this, uh, this hairstyle and like this, all came out of this lady literally for like two hours being like, all right, you can do your hair this way. You're going to need to use a little bit of this product because I have like really straight long hair that doesn't want to go any direction. Uh, that's uh, how you end up with this. <laughs> with, with Preston Johnson as well, what's your relationship like with him? Because he's obviously a massive part of the club. He's the, I would say, probably the main voice on Twitter with Crawley. He's interacting with the fans and things like mm. that. Um, yeah, what, what, what's, it, what's it like to kind of work with him? I could not ask for a better friend or a better business partner because of his mentality. He's very data-driven. I think he's also very um, very good at looking at different scenarios and cases and weighing them. But I also think he's just a genuine person. Like I said, for the best town, it comes down to the people. Uh, a genuine, a recurring theme with me is working with genuinely good people. And that's who I surround myself with. Right. Um, it doesn't matter about money or status or where you're from, what businesses you run. I just want to be around good people who are trying to do good things. Preston is the definition of that. Amazing. And I wanted to ask you, because you told me before that you were, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the Sidemen deal. How's that, how's that going? Is it still going ahead with the player coming to the yeah. FA Cup match? Um, I don't know if I can say anything That's around nice. that other than like that has gone really well, okay. um, in my opinion. For And I think a lot of people are going to listen to this and be like, has it though? Like what, like what? In my opinion, success from that meant just working with them. Attraction. Because even if we got the publicity that we did, in my opinion, it's still good. Mm-hmm. We still were able to raise money for charity. We we're still able to get a ton of pe- like. I don't think people understand at the end of the day that that had nothing to do with what happened in Doncaster that day because it was you know the same day. That that truly put us on a few people's radars that we were trying to get on, or you know we didn't even think we could get on their radar. And those discussions outside of you in the Simon organization. Um, are very positive, not only for Crawley Town, the organization, but I think for also like the town and the way that you know we can interact or do different things and what platforms that we would have to go forward. So, you know, I I don't know what's going to happen uh, with the Simon stuff if anything ever does. Obviously, that'll come out. But the the biggest thing is that we're trying to also think in that way of a non traditional football club. I love that. You don't see other clubs caring about YouTubers and. I think for fans be like, oh, you want to like interact with YouTubers? Like that's not that's not how you do it, or like, mm. why not? You obviously so just a bit of context. Mm. It was proposed that after the Sidemen charity match, which I'm mm-hmm. sure a lot of people listening to this will know 
what that is. Um, it was proposed that a player, a, a Crawley scout was going to watch that match and he was going to pick a player to be on the bench for Crawley's first right. FA Cup match, right? That's a massive, that's a massive deal. I remember hearing about it in the, in the car in the Overton press conference. I was like, that's, that's, that's huge mm -hmm. for the club. You don't see other League Two clubs doing that. No. You don't see them interacting with the big dogs because sidemen, they will, you know, they will bring a lot of following to your club, a lot of attention. Were you behind that? Yeah. Right, okay. I, 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 the, I remember the text message when that came up and was immediately like, yes. Because I, I, if I had been aware of that event happening um, before, I would have already, I think, even said something to the, to the group. But my, my background, again, is in social media, brand growth, um, mm -hmm. and, and marketing. And one thing that's very clear to me is that for us as a club to grow, our, our demo that we're focusing on can't just be the current fans. Um, it definitely needs to include them for sure. And we need to be understanding and uh, accommodate the traditions and not ruin, uh, I think, what is there already. But how do you build on top of that? The fact that I now know when I walk through London, if I go up to most, um, you know, 14 year old to 21 year olds, I'm like, do you know about Crawley Town? They know about it because of that news. Right, okay. And, and so from a fan perspective where you're like, oh, that was so dumb. Why would you ever do that? <laughs> well, at the same time now, a lot more people know about the club. A lot more people are now in some way kind of like, hey, that's my second team and because I think it's cool. Like, who does that? Um, but at the time, it was, you know, you, you were on a bad run of form. Yeah. And then you announced and, that, that. And I think that adds pressure onto that yeah. decision to, yeah. to do the partnership, to send somebody here, to, to say that we could sign somebody. Like, yes. just to have that idea of, oh, you're going to sign somebody while we're, like, losing? Like, oh, why aren't you focusing? And again, it has nothing to do with the day-to-day -day within the club. It's a marketing yeah. team that's doing some content and doing a partnership training doesn't get affected the gameplay the game strategy doesn't get affected so really it's you know when we're looking at a, a football club as a business overall there's the football side of playing on the field players strategy etc there's then also like the branding of that club making sure there's growth and how do you have more people want to wear a jersey be aware of following the club on social media views exposure brand deals all of that is also part of that business. And then on the other side of it, there's, you know, NFTs, et cetera, digital uh, assets. So all, I would say, like, those are, like, the main three verticals of how we run the football club. And, and I was just wondering, obviously, away from the, from the sideline stuff and the, the social media gr uh, growth, for the last two seasons before you came in, well, actually, no. So two seasons ago, Crawley finished 12th. Last season, partly under Wagmer United's leadership, you finished 12th again. That's two back-to-back -back, um, seasons in mid-table. Now, obviously, there's nothing too exciting about that, but it's away from safety. Mm -hmm. This season, you're not too far away from safety. You were bottom of the league not long ago. Crawley Town obviously haven't had the, the perfect start to the league. As we discussed before, there's a lot of games left oh, yeah. of the season. But however, because you've kind of had that dip and now you've got to take the club back to that level, maybe even higher, to, because obviously you've got to take it higher. If you're going to come in, talk, talk the talk, you've got, to, you've got to get them higher than that. Do you, do you feel any pressure as an ownership group? Or do you feel pressure with yourself to, to get Crawley higher up the league? Yeah, I think, so, I, obviously there is a pressure, I think, from fans after seeing all the, you know, commotion about us coming in and signing new players and, like, we're improving the club. And they're like, what are you? You're lower on the table. I understand that I, immediately. I think at the same time, though, there is a, well, we've made so much change, you can't expect it to just be, like, flipping a light switch. There is, it takes time. With where we're at currently, I do feel like I have a responsibility as an owner. I think everybody has, in the group has, feels like they have a responsibility to say, all right, where we're at right now is not reflective of where we want to be or should be. We need to improve. Um, I, I don't see us finishing like 13th as a failure or 14th as a failure. I see us finishing like bottom of the table as a, you know, hey, this season did not go th the way we wanted to. But I also do think that next season, regardless, the changes that we've made as people get used to the you know, new uh, squad, the new strategy, improvements to the grounds that we want to make, improvements to the training uh, process, that then, then like going into next season, I, I see us if we're not finishing the playoffs as, a, as a, truly a failure. Oh, okay. um, 
Yeah. Because the ambition is to get to, to, to League One, isn't it? Well, you know, if next season goes well and you stay in the league, you know, hopefully stay up. I mean, promotion's way off at the moment. There is obviously the odd chance that next season, if, say, Wrexham get promoted, you might be playing against some other North American owners. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe a little bit more high profile. They've got the documentary out already uh, with, like, Ryan Reynolds and Ron McElhenney. Um Anything to say about that? I think what they're doing is impressive. I think their relationship with uh, FX and Hulu to, to get mm. that platform uh, on on streaming platforms is amazing. The advertising that they're doing in America, bringing more eyes uh, in America to English football mm. is, I mean, they deserve a round of applause for it. Um, I think everybody keeps being like, oh, they're competitors of yours. Sure, I do look at them as like, there are the other American owners right now trying to become like, in a way, they, the internet includes you know streaming and social media and having that presence. They're kind of trying to do the same thing to an extent. Um, but I do have to say, I think at the end of the day, what everybody kind of wants is for English football to have a larger platform and for it to be where all the eyes are in the world. Like, hmm. I don't think anybody would ups- be upset mm-hmm. with that if like all of America all of a sudden just cared about like watching you know Chelsea play on a Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Why not? It's, or it's on a big, Saturday. It's a big thing in America already, isn't it? Though? Yeah. It's. I would say it's. It's, it's not big, but it's not the biggest. And I, yeah. I think that we're see, what we're seeing right now is it's the calm before the storm. In, in my opinion, when I, I look at things and like overall trends and how they're progressing, my opinion is that you'll see football the same way we've seen pickleball and spike ball um, really go on this absolute run. Football is going to have a, a moment where I think fans in America go, oh, I have a, this is my team. Where now, if you ask, they're like uh, MLS maybe. <laughs> and, and your goal is to not only you know bring more English fans into Crawley, it's to bring the America fans into Crawley yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. And I wouldn't yeah. say just America. I would say like I look at what's the market in Japan. How do we attack that demographic? What's happening in Africa? What's happening uh, in other parts of Europe? Like I don't think you can focus just because we're American on Americans. Um, I think you have to look at the whole world and say, like, how does this become appetizing, appealing, interesting to them? And how do we do this in a way that doesn't disrupt, like, the, the fans that are in Crawley so they feel like they're losing their club to the rest of the world? It should feel like they're gaining just a larger family around them who is like, oh, you're from Crawley? That is so cool. Like, that's, I wish, I wish I could go to games, etc. Do you relate to that? Because we, yeah, I mean, of... I mean, obviously we both support Arsenal. We support a big club which has a global following, and you know, our, every game I go to, it's someone's first game who's flown from Brazil or, yeah. or Australia or something, and you know, they simplify, They go, oh my god, how do you, how do you find it? You go this many times a season because you live close, and right. I mean, some people obviously are against it, but there's so many who are like, it's it's nice. These people are dedicated. They wake up at you know one o'clock in the morning, yeah. or I'm guessing you might have had that being in America sometimes paying attention to games and. I mean, it's a good thing to grow that. I mean, like you said, 100%. family. Yeah, like it is a family. I, I, that's I, how I look at it. It's not, you know, I think fans is a bad word to use, especially after like understanding the culture here. It's support. You know, yeah. supporters a, a better word. Um, I think a better word is family, just because of how intimate that relationship is, how strong that bond is to the club, and I don't want it to be like great. Like you support. Crawley, that's your really, like that's the only relationship you have is like to the club, to the players. I think that also involves like the ownership group. I think that involves the people that are working, you know, even like the security that are working in a game, they're part of it. Yeah. Everybody is part of this overall family. That's one thing I'd say going forward, if Crawley, you know, they do get to League One, they get the championship, they make it to the Premier League, prioritize those fans that have been there for years now and the fans that are there now because they're your they're your core support support yeah. group and and make sure that you know uh, if one day that Broadfield Stadium is flooded with fans and it's impossible to get tickets if anyone can get tickets it should be the people that are there already right. because yeah. of us oh god we've, oh. we've been I've been going to Arsenal for for years oh yeah so so when we've been struggling Arsenal have been struggling I don't know where you are with it's, been, it's been a while 
I, I, I've been, I think there was one season where I've been to like 12, 15 Oh, games. no, yeah, I've been going a lot more recently because oh, yeah. we've been bad and, and, you know, it's a day before the game and I can still get a ticket. Right, because it's and not then sold out. This season, suddenly we're good and I have to go to all the, all, all the cup games I have to go to because they're the cheaper ones which season yeah. ticket holders can't get hold of. We cannot we get... We can't get tickets. We can't get Premier League. <laughs> yeah, Premier League. I know. <laughs> like, like, but, we've you know, been I, loyal to us. Well, not as long to, as to all be the fair, fans, To be fair, we're not season ticket holders. We're no, not that loyal. But, but we've, like, been, we've been loyal than some of the, some of the people some, that are flooding in now. Some people are just like, oh, I'm not going to watch them. They're bad right, for three years exactly. and then pay money. Yeah. It's so hard, I think. And I, I think part of this is from my experience and like other businesses and watching other businesses grow where a lot, I think people get it wrong when as you're growing, as you're bringing in a larger fan base or larger customer base, however you want to look at it, um, that you lose what made you successful in the beginning because it's hard to scale that. It's hard to scale me going and sitting in the stand from like, you know, let's say we have 2,000 people show up. Mm. I can manage seeing a large portion of those people. When you're in the Premier League and you might have, you know, 60,000 people in a stadium, it is hard to scale up that intimate relationship of, yeah. okay, I went and sat and had a beer with like 30 people. That barely even makes a mark on, okay, are you interacting with the fan base? So... Well, that, that's the thing with Man City as well. Like, obviously, they've had that massive injection of cash. Crawley have, you know, undoubtedly had an injection of cash. Mm. You, you've got to try and keep that fan base, the, the connection with the fans, yeah. like tight. Because Man City, you know, although they would have had an initial connection, that cash injection has kind of pushed the success so high that maybe there's a reason why they can't fill their stadium every week, or maybe, or you know, in, in previous seasons yeah. when they won leagues, they're not selling out because they haven't got that core fan base, right? OK, I'm not saying that Man City haven't got four core fans. That yeah, you don't want to make a statement. <laughs> no, you know, maybe five years ago the Etihad isn't, isn't selling out and they're winning the Premier League. What's that about? Yeah. Crawley, you know, like you've got to, you've got to make sure that you can fill, fill the stadium, attract attention, get, get fans loving it, but also winning games, which okay. I know is a tricky thing to do. Yeah. I've just checked the Twitter. There's a question. There is another question. Think. There's another question. Get it going. OK, so I'll check. Here we are. It's right, I'm nervous. Okay. I don't know. Say that. I can't. Don't, uh, don't bother. We don't say that. I think it's just Turkey CPFC. So they're a Turkish Crystal Palace fan. That's from what I can tell. It's They've a said, their profile picture is Roy Hodgson with red eyes. With red okay, eyes. Now I'm genuinely scared. It's, it's random. It's so, CPFC. CPFC. So yeah, Crystal now Palace. I'm really scared. So, in an ideal scenario, would you expand Broadfield Stadium or build a new one? Ideal scenario. My ideal scenario is we expand the stadium. I, so, in my my vision is that. If we, like, let's say we go up to the point where we have, we could fill, like, a 50,000-person stadium. Mm -hmm. That field stays where it is, um, but it would require, and this is why I think it's so important to, again, we're doing this alongside the town. We're not just coming in and, you know, all right, like, let's hope they like what we do, or, like, let's just do it and they have to deal with it. It is very much a hand-in-hand process. Um I think not only with the expansion over the current location and building it out and offering better amenities, but like what is also around that that improves the town. I, I think it also requires that we think about like hotels and restaurants and bars and um, you know transportation infrastructure, like all of that. Like that question yeah. is really good because I think it also highlights the fact of like, yeah, you can improve and build out a stadium and get better fans, but you know you have to do that alongside the town to be successful. In doing that, I like the sound of the Tom Nichols Hotel. I think, Tom I think, yeah. Nichols Hotel. <laughs> yeah. I think I think that goes really well. It's time for the final part of the show. Obviously, you know our favourite part of the show. I'm not sure it's Hunter's favourite part of the show I, at I, the moment. I think this is. I'm very nervous for this. Well, it, it's time for the quiz. This week's quiz is called Americans in Football. It's uh, it's an interesting one. We obviously, you know, it's been inspired by our American guest today, Hunter. We're gonna we're gonna kick things off. This is how it works. There are gonna be ten questions chucked in there. There's gonna be multiple different multiple different bonus questions, things like that. It might get a little bit complicated, but just um, just just follow me. We need buzzers. Do you know what buzzer buzzer is? Like, yeah, just, yeah. We yeah. don't actually have physical. Buzzers. We don't have we the physical ones yet. So this is how it works. So one of you have have a noise that you shout. Whoever shouts the noise first gets on to the question first. So in the past, I usually go bang, 
And that's all my right, buzzer. Let's go okay. bang. All right, right okay. he's saying bang. I'll go ding. Right, you go ding. I'll go okay. ding. Oh no, I like ding more. All right, ding. Be, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you go ding. I'll go bang. We usually we, we prefer bang on this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoever gets that okay. first. Oh, okay, you do. Okay, I get it. All right. right. So you're going ding. All right, you'll I'll go, go ding. ding. You'll I'll go, go bang. bang. I'm gonna just go with whoever I hear first. All right. Okay, so don't you know we can get we've got our VAR team in the background. Yeah, we can we can instant replay this in the future in the edit. You get one point per question. Okay. Let's go. Question one. Name the player from the US that scored the most goals in the Premier League. Ding. Uh, Clinton Dempsey. It's correct. It's one little to Isaac. Uh, Fair play. Don't, don't worry about yeah. it. Isaac's not going to know all of these. I nearly went, nice I nearly went London Donovan, but I realised he only played for Evan for like five weeks. So that wouldn't have got Was it, it only five weeks? Well, he was on loan. It was like a short part of time. It was like half a season. He played like five games. But I like Donovan. I like yeah. Him. Oh, yeah. He's, he's the more American era. Yeah. He spent more time in America. Question two. Landon Donovan. Oh, there we are. American <laughs> football slash soccer legend. Played for Everton. There he is. How many goals did he score for the Toffees? I'll start the club. Ding, one. Incorrect. Oh, no. It goes over to you. Two. It's correct, Hunter. Two fair. Yes. I'm on the board. Okay, that's all I want. I want more points. To be fair, fair, it was barely any. I knew it, it was, was short. It was a very short spell. It was a short I feel spell. really bad that I've literally just ruined the question <laughs> by just going <laughs> into it. Fun. Sorry. You did give me some help. Up. You you were your own worst enemy. I, I am my own worst enemy because I set myself up. I, it's I, one goal. I would have said he was there for a season. I didn't realise it was that I, short I think it, it was alone. I think it was half a season. Question three. In 1994, America hosted football's biggest competition, the World Cup. They're allowed to host the event based on what famous condition? Uh, ding, they had to uh, have a league. They had to build a league because the MLS didn't exist before. Yeah, I'll take that. Oh, they okay. had to create a professional football league or the creation of the MLS. Major oh, I, league. I was not aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. That was a stipulation. I think, I think it's a legal requirement that mm-hmm. you need a league to have host the World Cup and you didn't have one. Question four. <laughs> Untraditionally, Germany kicked off the 1994 World Cup against Bolivia. Okay. But who did the US play in their first match of the competition? I have no clue. I have no clue either. I'm going to have to just guess the most random... Ding. Uh, France. Incorrect. No. Goes over to Hunter. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go... Oh, I have... <laughs> this is so hard. I'm going to go with Spain. Is incorrect. It was Switzerland. Oh, oh. I was never going to get that. <laughs> Score mains. <laughs> to one of the question four, but we've got a bonus question oh. for question four. The match against Switzerland, Switzerland and the US ended 1-1. Can you tell me who scored for America? 1994. 1994. I'll be very impressed if you get this. Ding Lalas. No, it's a good guess though. It's very good Something guess. he played around then. I, I, this is a question I just have no Yeah, it's fine. We, we have a few of those on the show. Go on. If you've got any, any idea? I have z- like zero. All right, well, it was Eric Wijnaldum. I don't know if you. I don't, I don't know, know who he is because um, <laughs> I hadn't before making the quiz. As not me- most yeah, Americans I know are know. playing now. Don't so. know. Question five: The you Bundesliga can... currently holds eleven American players, which is the most for a league outside of America. I'm going to give away a point for every single net player you can net, American player you can name in the Bundesliga, but you have to buzz before every answer you give. Ding, Giovanni Reiner. Is correct. It's Ding. To Isaac. Chandler, Chandler, isn't it? That's one of the names, I think. Yeah, I'll give you that. It's 4-1 four, it's four to Isaac. I can hear my media team in the back room laughing. They're, um, he's giving me the... Uh, he just threw up an L for elbows. I'm, I'm, wishing, I, I'm wishing Alfonso Davies was, was American, but no, he's Canadian. I can't think of any. You got, any, you got anything, Hunter? I don't watch don't, any don't of that, so I unfortunately don't. I'm not up to date. To be fair, I don't either. I'm getting this all of FIFA. I'm thinking, I, I'm know, thinking of FIFA. I'm going to throw up a huge disclaimer. You could put it in giant red. I only care about Crawley right now. So and I, I would say that most mm-hmm. of my knowledge on football has been really, like, I, not, like, watching it. It's more just, like, I'll watch, like, YouTube and stuff, whatnot. But mm. um, well, you got the Landon Donovan question, right? Yeah, but, yeah. I, I, again, I, I really do think, like, especially now, like, being on current trends, if I'm looking at anything or care about anything, it's just Crawley, honestly. Perfect. Well, <laughs> I'm going to carry on with this quiz anyway. Yeah. Question six. What was the score the last time England and the US met at a major tournament? Ding. Oh. Two nothing. Ding. No, it wasn't. One one. It was one one. It was one one. It, at a major, was, okay. at it, a major tournament. It was a may big, well have been the friendly. At a major tournament. Oh no. It, it, in, in, wait, we're not, you're not. At a major tournament, it was one one. Isaac is the point. It was a, I mean, I, I mean, I think we'll remember it more than Americans, purely because of how much it hurt. 
because uh, of why we drew because it went through the keeper's hands. World Cup. Who, who I, shot? Gonna, oh. gonna, who I'm, shot was it? Dempsey? I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it again. You don't know what question's coming next, so don't give out knowledge you don't want to give away. Bonus question for that one. Name a goal scorer from that match. Ding, Ding Dem- Oh, he's got it. No. <laughs> I, I had under. Dempsey. Dempsey is, um, is, and is the other one was Gerard. You're, the other you're, one was Gerard. Like, literally, my points have all <laughs> come from you. <laughs> I need to shut my mouth. I need to shut my mouth. Question seven. Who's the current top goal scorer in the MLS? Um, Again, I will beat him first. Um, I'm not too sure. Uh, I will. I would. Ding. I'm not sure I'm going to go for a guess. Carl Fair? No. Okay. I'm trying to... I know who I want to guess. I just can't remember his name. Oh, God. I don't... I don't know. All right. Oh, uh, in that question, it was Hani Mukhtar. I don't oh, think, don't oh I've packed that guy on FIFA. <laughs> Generally, that's my only knowledge <laughs> of the guy. That's your only knowledge. I need to watch more American, more, more MLS. Question eight. Come on, answer. Pick, pick yourself up. You, it's 5-2 to Isaac. Well, he's Keep got, two, he's got, got, he's got two right. He's got two right. There's been uh, much worse quizzes on this, mm. on this channel. In the 1990s, America tried to Americanise penalty shootouts with the true shootout, where players would start from 35 yards out and then they'd have to score one-on-one against the goalkeeper. What would happen in that concept if a goalkeeper fouled the, the player running at them trying to score during it? What would happen? What would be... What, what would uh, ding. ding. Oh. Hunter? Uh, it would go to a normal PK. I'm sorry, Hunter. That's correct. Oh, I thought very it, I thought, decent. Knowledge. Joe, my very answer would have been they would just count it as a mess. Very decent play it off. No, because then the goalkeeper would just walk out and punch the player, and then it's well, like, no, not punch. <laughs> you could just like slide tackle him and accidentally kick him in the in the you know chest or something. But right. Well, yeah, it would be they'd be given a normal penalty. That's not that's some nice knowledge from Hunter. To be fair, question nine is still doable. You can still catch Isaac mm. if you get these next two questions right. It's currently five. It's currently five three to Isaac. Question nine. Who is the all-time top goal scorer in MLS history? Ding, uh, Landon Donovan. Is incorrect. Oh. Um, oh man, I feel like I have a. I'm trying to even think who I guess. <laughs> that was actually a really hard question. If you don't get this, Isaac has won the quiz. I have no idea. I'm going to give you a 10 second count. Because that would have been my guess. I yeah. have no idea like who else it would have no. been. No. It's got to be someone like, like who is American who's played that the whole Six time. Six seconds to give me an answer. I don't have an answer. It was Chris Wondolowski. He scored 169 yeah, goals. I would have no, no, no. I wouldn't no have got that. I mean, Hunter has lost the quiz, unfortunately. He's got, he's got, he's he's got enough lead. points. He's, had a, he's put on a good show. It's not, it's, not too, it's not been too bad, but we've got one more question. We might as well go with it. Yeah, we've got to do it. Greg Balharter, I think that's how you pronounce his name, is the current US international manager. Mm. He once played for a Premier League team. But who did he play for? Ding. Chelsea? Is incorrect. Ding. Aston Villa. Is incorrect. I'll give you a bit more of a clue. My, my one I was thinking was Everton. It's a London, sort of London based thing. Crystal Palace. Palace. It's correct. Yeah. They just seem like we're, the kind of club that would sign him. <laughs> we give the point. He's got, his, he's got his hands on his face. He's like, how did you perform so poorly? Unbelievable. So who fair. are you going to go with in the end there? Uh, I was going to, well, because he's a Crystal Palace fan, I was gonna, probably going to go with Crystal oh, Palace. Oh, he's a Crystal Palace fan. To be fair, with I'll take that. one more question to end the episode. It's the bonus question in case you're on a time case, In case it would have been a time. I've got to ask it. I'm not putting in the work and not asking. Yeah. yeah. Who will the US play in the first game of Qatar 2022? Uh, Ding. Wales. It's correct. Isaac earns another point. Well done, Isaac. Lads, it's been a brilliant time. Oh, I fa- can't that <laughs> work. See, and the issue here is I knew it and I hesitated for a second because I was like, if you say it wrong, they're going to be like, how do you not know that? To be oh, fair, the only reason, I wouldn't know that if it went for the USA being in our group. Yeah. Uh, that's the only reason I know. Oh. Because I only know they're group. playing Wales because we're playing Iran. Are so. you nervous for that game? America? Um... I'll be honest, no. But like, I mean, I'm a little bit nervous because if we lose, I know what it's going to be like online and the Americans will really go at it, but... Oh, support, I will have a go Who will you support, by the way, at the World Cup? You will be America. America, of course. I mean, where are you for the World Cup? Um, I am in... You're in America. Miami. Ooh. That's a shame, unless we fly out to Miami. <laughs> Hunter, it's been brilliant having you on the show. It's been, yeah. great. It's been superb. We're so lucky to have you. Um, thanks so much for listening or watching to The Football in Question.